Dogumentary TV, producing the best breed documentaries on YouTube. My name is Tony Young, and I've been a Dogue de Bordeaux lover since 2004, which is coming on to 14 years now. The Dogue de Bordeaux is the ultimate pet. He's the perfect companion, perfect for kids, perfect for just hanging out. He is, in my opinion, my Dogue de Bordeaux is the most perfect dog on the planet. <laughs> When I was researching the perfect breed for my lifestyle, I was looking for something that was intimidating looking um, and looked protective, but was really just a big love muffin who could be docile and friendly around strangers coming around me, but could also be protective if need be. And I wanted a dog I could just hang out with all the time. I was exploring different breeds uh, from boxers to bulldogs and a friend of mine introduced me to this breed and a course of events from being told about it by a friend and the next night Turner and Hooch came on and the next night a Sex and the City episode I thought okay I'm being given a message let me explore this breed I found a pair of naval officers down in the San Diego area who had just had a litter and I went down to see what puppies looked like fell in love with the father I have never seen a more magnificent and yet loving and sweet breed, I just, I fell in love. The anecdotal story of the Dogue de Bordeaux is that like many of the Molosser breeds in Europe, it's a descendant of the Roman war dog. The French aristocrats for centuries after the Roman invasion faded away, uh, kept the dogs as guardians of their estates. When the French Revolution came around, many of them were killed guarding the estates, but those that survived were brought into the cities and were trained to pull carts of meat from the slaughterhouses to the butcher shops to guard the meat but not eat the meat. One of the reasons this is not a food-driven breed now. Then over the course of the years after, uh, they were used on farms, mostly dairy farms. When World War II came around, this breed is so protective of their families that they really did a number on German soldiers. Uh, and apparently, so much so that Hitler put a, an extermination order out on this breed. After World War II, there were only six breeding pairs left. And a group of people out of Belgium and the Netherlands worked to bring the breed back, interbreeding them with other breeds like the English Mastiff, St. Bernard's, Newfoundland's, um, the Old English Bulldog, which is a longer leg breed, to create, to bring back the breed of what is today's Dogue de Bordeaux, which is now bred for temperament, as well as uh, the looks of the breed. Targon's full name, his AKC registered name, is Stolen Hearts' Park Avenue Targon Hearts Joy. I'm kind of a Game of Thrones fan. He is two and a half years old, 25 inches at the withers and about 120 pounds, but he's still growing, so he'll be about 140 when he's finished. Targon is my constant companion. He travels with me, I travel a bit. He's a great road warrior and my co-pilot and navigator. He comes with me on business trips. He comes with me to my offices. He, I work from home. He's with me all day long. I also, uh, take him out with me when I go out at night sometimes because people just love him and he loves people. So he is my, my best friend, the love of my life. Well, after the movie Turner and Hooch came out, it created what usually happens in a situation like that. A lot of backyard breeders trying to profit from the popularity of what was then a very rare breed and still is, uh, just recently recognized by the AKC. So a lot of this inbreeding and a small gene pool has created some unhealthy dogs. There is a very dedicated group of Dogue de Bordeaux owners who are working very diligently to create a, a strong, healthy, long-lived breed. To keep him healthy, uh, besides making sure that he's got the right bloodline of, from healthy dogs, keeping him regularly exercised, but not too much. They overheat easily, 
also trying to you know make sure that he doesn't overheat and feeding him a very lean but healthy diet no treats they're not food driven anyway uh, I give him raw beef bones which keeps his teeth clean and gives him something to chew on and gives him his bone meal and a kangaroo based kibble grain free with boiled hamburger uh, exploring the idea of raw diet which I understand is probably the best thing I could do for him, but it could be a little expensive for a dog that size. Uh, this is a relatively low maintenance dog when it comes to grooming. Because we do therapy dog work, I have him professionally groomed every couple weeks with a hypoallergenic shampoo. I spray him down with a, a Nature's Miracle disinfectant spray and a little lavender oil. Uh, and for showing, I have him groomed as well for that. But Normally, just a wipe down with a wet towel, and he's good to go. Shedding, uh, they will shed between the spring and summer, losing the thicker winter coat, but it's really not bad. I have these rubber gloves that I can just wipe him down with, and it's really, it's very, very low on the shedding and a very low maintenance dog to groom. Dog de Bordeaux are a sedentary breed, as are a lot of Mastiffs. They're happy just laying around. They'll have spurts of energy where they'll play for five minutes and sleep for an hour, which fits my lifestyle perfect because I work from home, I work a lot, and it's very difficult having to stop what I'm doing to deal with an overactive dog. Not a problem I have. He will, at, I call it sundown syndrome, at sunset. There's playtime, he decides to have a little spurt of energy, out come the toys, he wants to run around a little bit, and then he's done. So we will go for walks through the neighborhood, which is good for me because I haven't been the, the most diligent in the gym myself. And it gives me an excuse to go out and get some exercise uh, as well, and he loves it in small doses. We're not a five mile hike kind of couple. <laughs> Targon became a therapy dog after I had him temperament tested and he just passed all the tests with flying colors. And I watched him become an extraordinary therapy dog, especially with kids. He has an affinity towards certain types of, of people who have different types of ailments, um, but he's so gentle with the kids. It is amazing. He will crawl up into a bed with a kid who is in pain and unhappy start licking them and being a little bit of a clown and next thing you know there's smiles and giggles and a day that wasn't so great has turned into a really good day. It's now when we walk into a hospital room I see faces light up when they see him and his tail just starts wagging. He loves it. So he's found his calling. He's an excellent therapy dog. By his looks alone he's an amazing protector. He has a very powerful and intimidating demeanor. So anybody coming by who might be casing the joint will definitely think twice about my house. They'll just go, no, we'll move on to the next one. Uh, even though he's never been in a situation yet where he has to be proven, I'm sure that if anybody was to mess with me, it would not be pretty. He's sweet, he's, he's very gentle, but I have seen where he sense that maybe I wasn't comfortable in a situation and he'll put himself between me and what he senses is making me uncomfortable just in case he's needed. Um, luckily I haven't had a situation yet to test him but I'm sure I am very confident that I will be in very good hands or paws. He is an independent breed but he has to see that I'm within earshot or eyeshot of him. Around the house you know he'll go into other rooms maybe to sleep but his favorite position is anywhere near me within a five foot circumference. I don't necessarily even need to have him on a leash because I know he's not gonna go running off. He might go off to go sniff at something, but if I start walking that direction, he's right along with me. He's not needy, but he's also, I never have to worry about that dog wandering off. Like any dog, it's all about socializing them from the beginning. He, this breed in particular is known to be really good with kids um, and it really kind of depends on how they've been brought up. He's been socialized from day one with other dogs, with other people, all kinds of, of outside stimuli so that there's nothing that's going to, it's also why he's a therapy dog, nothing surprises him. He loves other dogs, he loves puppies. He sees a puppy and he just gets down and he melts. We have an American Bulldog in our neighborhood. The two of them can play for hours and just 
you know, they'll be exhausted dropping and he, he's fine. He's an intact male, so I am careful with him with other intact males and it shows, you know, we don't allow the dogs to interact, but he has never shown any sign of aggression towards another dog or person. I've had a lot of different breeds in my life, from Great Danes to Cockapoos. I am absolutely addicted to Dog de Bordeaux. I will never have another breed of dog. This is the dog that's going to carry me through to the rest of my life, this breed. I just can't imagine myself with any other kind of dog. He, they are perfect for my lifestyle. This guy, I hopefully will have him around for quite a while. Um, I am so happy to see that he's become such a great therapy dog. I see us continuing down that road as far as we can go. He's done a little animal acting. He's got a movie coming out. He's an extra in the movie Show Dogs and we'll see where it goes from there. But he's shown an affinity for the camera, so possibly explore some ideas along those lines for him. But that and just being my best friend and constant companion, that's all I really ask of him and he's quite happy to oblige.